actually with our um, upcoming launch of Footprints Nature Quest, we've been spending a little bit of time talking about the different uh, ways to do it and what you need and how to. And, and I think that one of the, most of us live in cities and towns. Um, we don't have, um, we're not living in the countryside on farms and that sort of thing. So it's nice for us to talk about how to do nature study in the concrete jungle because it's there all the time. It might not be, you know, bluebells in the British countryside, but there are weeds in the pavement cracks and there are pigeons and doves and that sort of thing all around us. So let's focus today on some tips for folk who are living in small properties, even in flats and apartments, even in cities, um, and what, what they can do with their kids for nature study. So you go first. Well, I think the point is just to start where you are mm -hmm. and with what you see. And I'm sure that everywhere there's a bird that comes and lands on a windowsill or a fence yeah. or a rooftop or something. Like you say, even if it's a pigeon or just a little sparrow or something common, but you can just look at that every day and observe it. And then on Friday say, right, let's try and draw the pigeon or mm -hmm. the sparrows or whatever it is that's in your area. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think worst case scenario, like what if you live at the top of a high tower in a flat in the middle of Joburg center, city center, I mean, there must be birds there. Otherwise there must be a park within a short distance from where you live. I'm sure there must be somewhere where you can go or somebody else's garden that you could just walk past. And I don't know, you, you've just got to find a way yeah. to find what little bit of nature is around you. There, there must be bugs. Um, like you say in the gutters there must be creepy crawlies and weeds and that's even nature and you know it can be quite interesting to discover how a weed like I believe the dandelion has amazing medicinal and herbal yeah. properties I haven't actually researched them and recorded them but you could make that your study like mm -hmm. you know go and blow the dandelion on the pavement and draw it and press it and research it and and then you've done your nature study and so you're just learning those skills yeah. And I think that's the point. We want to teach our kids to observe nature, to learn how to record it in their journal and to go and research more about whatever it is. So it's just about starting with what you can. Mm -hmm. And I think like we said in one of our previous things, you can do nature study your way. There isn't the right way or the best way or the Wendy way and the Shirley way. You know, just, just give it a go and adapt it to suit whatever circumstances you are in. Absolutely. And there's, um, Charlotte Mason also talks about packing up a picnic and going on a day's trip, you know, so if you don't want to do it as a mom on your own with your kids, maybe on a Saturday or a Sunday, um, if you live in, in, in Joburg, you can go to one of the local dams or, you know, game reserves or to botanical gardens, same thing for folks living in the center of Cape Town or any of the other cities, there are botanical gardens that you can travel to. But while you're in your home, um, there's lots of other things that you can do, like, um, you know, growing beans from seeds, you know, how we used to do it between cotton wool and then the kids yes. can um, do that. You can also grow microgreens on your windowsill. If you've got a balcony, you can um, put up hanging baskets and grow veggies that can drape or flowers that can drape and your kids can follow those. Um, the other thing that I remember from Charlotte Mason's original homeschooling series for the sort of kindergarten years, she spoke about um, following the sun through the house, making it so that the kids understand your compass points while well, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. It does do that. Yes, it does. <laughs> check that um and 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 for them to understand the length of the rays and the shadows and you know all that that's all nature study um and when we break it down like that there's so much that you can do just within your own home um on a smaller property if you're not in the city center in a smaller property one of the things we love doing was bird feeders in our garden um if you've got a patch of grass that you can lie on on a picnic blanket and then you can look up into the sky and look at the clouds and talk about that. When you're driving to places, you can talk about seasons, um, you know, so there is so much that you can do, but I think that we undermine or, or undervalue those everyday things because we've got so used to them because we're 40, 50 years of age, 
but for our kids, it can still, you know, give them a sense of wonder about the world around them. So, yeah, I think that's a good few tips for folks to get started with. Great. Let's wrap it up there. Cheers. <laughs>